Welcome and thanks for watching. This is going to be a semi wrap up video of the M715. Um, there's a couple things that I have already done that I'm going to do as standalone videos, one of which is the uh, uh, air conditioning. Uh, there is so much technical information and kind of some how to information that I didn't want to eat up this whole video talking about air conditioning. The other thing is, is there are some bugs I have found in the engine programming as well as some engine performance issues. And we'll address that probably at the same time with some HP tuner work. Uh, what I am doing on this video is getting the details buttoned up for the off-road show, which has already happened, but I'm a little behind on videos. Now the off-road show is in the summer it's from the local Jeep club and I take all my junk down there just to show it. Um, this put me in kind of a time crunch uh, for this uh, finishing the truck up. A uh, couple things while I'm waiting for parts I forget to show people. One of which was remember the bed tie down that were missing on the passenger side. Well, I can show you how I corrected that issue. The other thing is I wanted to kind of address, I put a bed mat in this. Now the bed mat is just a, a universal four by eight and I did have to trim it and it's held in with screws so it won't move around. I did have to cut a hole for the gooseneck hitch. Um, that way it has access. Now, something I want to point out on, if you're gonna do a bed mat, Make sure it's got the dimples so that it holds the mat up off of the bed so airflow gets under there and it won't rust. That also helps in addition to having the ribs in the bed. Those ribs give it strength, but they also help it drain. Uh, if the bed mat is secured in one end so it doesn't slide around, it won't rub the paint off and uh, it'll, it'll help protect it at that point. Another uh, huge tip I would like to offer those of you who have trucks, if you are going to leave them set for long periods of time, or if you're going to go buy one of these old things that has been sitting for a long period of time, look at how it's parked. If it is parked with the tail down, you're going to be in a lot better shape than if it were parked tail up. The reason being is when they're parked tail up for a long period of time, rain, water, moisture get in, and they collect in the front of the bed and they don't drain, they rot it out and rust it. If they are parked tail down, the water tends to uh, drain out of them and they, they will hold up better long term. So those two details I wanted to touch on today. Plus I got another couple little cool details that we finished up on paint and little trim items. Uh, the big jobs today, are uh, I got a mountain balance the well, mount <laughs> kind of balance the uh, bead locks and tires wheels for this got to build a set of skid plates engine transmission transfer case and gas tank uh, those are items that you can get away without having just for a show but they really stand out when people start crawling around your work and they can they can see some of that stuff so i really need to get that done uh get everything ready go to the show on top of that some friends of mine put together an old iron run now anyone's allowed to come but they asked if you have old iron jeeps bring that to four wheel so we're going to uh, join them in the old iron run on this video too so uh, again, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, let's get some wheels mounted now. The wheels I chose for this are a spider lock, 17 by 9 inch wheel. Now I chose the spider locks because they have this five star looking rock ring on them. Uh, I'm going to paint this rock ring to match the body of the truck. Uh, to paint aluminum, got to do a couple things. First of all, you have to clean it really well. Uh, I use prep all and then once the prep all dries, I have to clean the film off of that. Once that's done, then you can paint them 
with a primer that's a self-etching primer that is designed to adhere to aluminum. Otherwise, the regular paint won't stick. Ran a couple good coats of this primer on, and like I said, it's self-etching. It seems to work okay. And then a couple real good coats of the same paint I've been using on everything else. That's dry. Now we're ready to mount some tires. The tires I'm going with are Patagonia Milestar. They're a 40-inch all-terrain tire. Um, I've heard good reviews on them and great prices on these things. Most tire shops won't mount beadlocks for you, so I'll show you how to do one, or not. Um, first thing, stems. If you don't have a stem puller, use a pair of diagonal cutters to pull them in. They grab the threads really well. I happen to have a stem puller, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. A little soap on it. soapy water. I will say my 200 pound friends have an advantage over when it comes to this. Before I put this ring on, I'm also using ballast beads. So I'll throw one of those in there too. One of the issues I've run into several times is you got to get this upper bead centered right around that lip pretty exact. If I take this little pry bar and a socket, I put the socket down by the tire. Gives me just enough space, I can kind of wedge it and push the tire out. Once I have the tire out, just snug the bolt and it'll keep that out. Might have to adjust what size of socket you're using. This one's actually a little big for this one, so. Um, once I get the tire truly centered, then I, I don't have to worry about it being misaligned. Start all the bolts by hand, then I snug them up with the little impact, and then I use the torque wrench. Torque spec on these is 25 pounds. You can go crisscross. I found that once they're all snug, I just keep going in circles till nothing else loses torque, and then I'm even all the way around. Just kind of my method, but any way you want. Wash, rinse, and repeat that another three times. Off with the old and on with the new tires. Notice the black lug nuts with that. Well, this is actual ride height. You can see the lift is actually not even on the frame. That just gives you some perspective there. Around the post. I like its attitude. There we go. I mean, the lift's kind of distracting, but this thing sits just perfect. I'm really glad I added those two inches and that extra spring up front. I think it just sits right where it needs to be. As I've been doing painting on this, you've probably noticed I've been doing the uh, army stars on it, on the doors, tail, hood, all that stuff. I've also figured out what I'm gonna use for a unit number. So I had a stencil made and uh, we're gonna paint the unit number on it. 
or identification number on it, and I'll explain what that is here in just a few minutes. Well, once the paint dries, I'll use some soap and water and clean up the mastic. That looks pretty cool. Looks like a military truck now. Fortunately, it's a reusable stencil, so I could do it on both sides and the tailgate. Another useless detail, but these chains are really cool. I had to clean them up and paint them and get them ready. And here's what I'm doing with them. I don't know specifically what these chains are off of, but a friend of mine built himself an Overland trailer, and it was an ex-military trailer, and it had these safety chains on it. Well, he wanted to modernize it, so he gave these to me. And they have absolutely no function on this vehicle, but I think they look cool. So where those tie downs for the bed were cut off on the passenger side, I took a couple pieces of cardboard and I templated out from the right side, just traced them. Then I used a piece of metal once they were cut out real rough, clamped it to the driver's side, finished grinding the shape, welded them to the passenger side, and I just repainted them. I didn't make them too nice. I wanted them to look like they've been there for a while. And that's how I did that. I'm just gonna make this real quick. For those of you who are not Chevy nuts, kind of like I am, uh, I'm gonna explain the unit number up here. Now, all the military trucks had a unit number of some sort on them, as well as when a lot of these went to fire departments, they had unit numbers on them. And they always stuck them up here or sometimes on the hood. But I wanted something up here just to kind of keep the military motif going again. But this has nothing to do with the military. The L18, is the engine family from General Motors. The 496 is the cubic inches of the engine, and RAT means it's a big block, not a small block. Not a lot of mystery there, but cool factor, I think. I named this truck the Army RAT because, well, it was an Army truck and it's got a big block, so I named it the Army RAT. I was doing a search looking for ideas for a decal, a uh, little, little rat guy, kind of like this one. And this one actually popped up. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll redraw it a little bit different. And I just really liked this one. So I downloaded it, uh, tried to find out who the artist is that, that drew it originally. I think this one I found on Pinterest or something like that. But there was no name on it, at least on what I found. So I sent it to the local print shop up here to find out if they could make stickers. And they said they can reproduce it as long as there's no watermark or copyright uh, on it. And they said there was none. So they said they could go ahead and print it. And I had a half dozen of these stickers made for all the stars and a couple various places on it. And I want to give acknowledgement to the artist that drew it, first of all, because it's really a cool little, little drawing. If that artist happens to see this and contacts me, that would be really cool, too. Number one, they could give me permission to use it on things like YouTube. Uh, number two, I can give them the correct acknowledgement. Number three, I would really like them to come out here and remove the sticker and draw it by paint for real like a pinstriper would because it would be really cool to have this done in real paint, not a sticker. Uh, because everything else I've done as far as the lettering and the stars and stuff like that, I've done with paint. Uh, I just wanted to give that acknowledgement for the rat. Uh, it's really cool and I like it. Since we're gonna make some skid plates now, I guess we can use some of this material that I was gonna use for the winch. 
and a uh, bunch of other scrap I got laying around here. Not sure where I'm gonna go with these yet, but I need to start building the skid plates for the engine and this design may change, but it gives me a starting point, so. These bolts are placed so that I can bolt them to tabs and the underside is flat. That way they won't get hit on anything. Once I had the skid plate shaped and sized correctly, I framed it with some small angle iron and then spent an hour welding all the way around it. Uh, I've also had to cut a couple of notches, one for the exhaust and then another one for a bump out on the oil pan. Um, these are pretty rigid and keep in mind, I only attach the engine skid plate to the engine and the cross member that moves with the engine. This is not attached to the frame of the vehicle. And it's not just welded to the outside, it's also stitch welded on the inside. Even though I paint them ahead of time, I still have to touch up paint after I put the skid plate in because I tend to scratch them up putting them in. Skid plate came out pretty nice. Nice and straight, fits. I did have to notch a little bit here. It was a little closer than I wanted. Uh, you know, there's a part of the oil pan sticks out a little further, but I'm okay with that. Now, I am going to tell everyone this. It always looks really cool on video, you know, weld, 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 and all of a sudden it's in and looks perfect. What no one ever seems to really tell you is when you do all this welding on a chunk of metal, it warps, shrinks, expands, and is never exactly the same. I would always recommend, if you're gonna weld on it, uh, bolt it in place and then weld on it, because otherwise, I got about a three foot piece of pipe that I had to use as a little bit of an influencer to move these front arms a little forward, and then they also twisted a little bit. So, it does fit, it fits really nice, but it, it isn't as easy as it always looks. Um, but I'm happy with this. Uh, it'll, it'll protect that oil pan, uh, even though I'm not planning on abusing this. Next, gas tank skid plate. That I think I'm going to uh, uh, probably really consider as a safety item there. Well, that doesn't happen very often. I ran out of gas and wires pretty much at the same time. I think there was about 100 pounds of gas left in the old welder. And uh, I was figuring I'd run out of gas first. I ended up running out of wire. I got me some new stiffy gloves while I was out. Built the gas tank skid plate pretty much the same way I built the uh, engine skid plate. I use some struts to attach it with, and then I frame it in with some heavier metal, creating an angle which gives it a lot of rigidity. Um, I did have to twist some of this angle for the tabs and the plated areas where it mounts to the frame. It just uh, seemed to fit better that way. Had to make a couple minor adjustments, but it's tough now. Quarter inch with three sixteenths supports and stuff. So I uh, got to test fit it into the frame before I finish welding the uh, bolt-on frame tabs in there. Test fit went really easy on this one. Uh, I had not welded the tabs to the frame yet, so I 
held this up where it went, welded the tabs to the frame, dropped it back down, a little bit of primer, a little bit of paint, and I am ready to install. One tab mounts directly to the frame. The others have the 3 16 struts that go right up to other tabs on the frame. Gas tank skid plate mounted in in place. Get clearance pretty good. The hole's not quite centered, but that's okay. We'll live. Next up is some transfer case protection. So quarter inch plate. I'm gonna cut a slot here and cut a slot here on the opposite end. That way, when I cut these two slots, I can kind of flat, drop down, across, up, and over. And uh, we'll have a, another skid plate. It only has to go down half an inch total, so. I only have to bend these like a quarter inch, but I don't have a break. So what I do is I slot them, throw them in a vise, bend them, and then I just uh, run a little weld over them. Cut, cut, broke, broke. All my bends are where they need to be now. Cut a couple little pieces to, well, it reinforces it, but it looks cool too. All the welds cool. finished, just gotta let her cool down now. Transfer case skid plate finished. It's actually a little deeper than I need it to be, but it looks really cool when it's on there. So once I paint it, we'll throw it on. Last piece, I put this little scuff here, which acts as a brace up against the cross member, and it kind of gives it a little bit of a deflection if something hits that low. Again, probably don't need it, but it's there. And a drain hole. Don't want stuff sitting up there. Little paint and get her bolted in. I used button bolts on this one. Transfer case cross member in place. Hangs down just below the frame, but that's okay. And I've also got this little tab here. So if something were to come up and really hit it hard, this would kind of stop at the transfer case. It would actually give it a little more rigidity. Uh, keep it from flexing. I don't think this will ever see a hit there. First drive on the way to the off-road show. so good. Absolutely beautiful. So uh, I'm going to call this one a win so far. 
I do have a couple little bugs I still have to work out. Uh, I've got to take, uh, get into this with an HP tuner and change the uh, tack so that it actually reads correct. And uh, just a couple little minor things like that, but so far so good. My stuff attracts a lot of attention. It's weird. Uh, the Army truck, since it was its first time out, uh, got a lot of looks. <laughs> they copied my truck. <laughs> I did. Yeah, there's a Scout 2 running around here somewhere. <laughs> we have got the vintage iron run going on today. We still allow some of the newer stuff, but we definitely got the old stuff out here today. Mostly Willie's, Flat Thunder, CJ5s, and Scout 2. Well, our maiden portage off-road in the M715. It's a little bouncy, like I didn't expect that. But so far, we have plenty of power, and uh, there's plenty of other old Jeeps on this trail. There's really not a lot of obstacles on this particular trail. It's just a kind of a good time, a lot of really nice scenery, uh, a lot of places to stop and yak and wait for everyone to kind of catch up and enjoy the day. Uh, got nice views of the Grand Mesa, of the river, you know, some nice uh, panoramic areas when you drop down off of the uh, top and down in into the river area and of course the windmill this is loop. why they call it the windmill loop we got a windmill the old iron run we did get all of the old iron to line up for a couple of good photo ops here After we were done with a uh, little bit of lunch and photo opportunities with this, a uh, bunch of my friends that have hats from my channel now uh, decided we needed to do a little photo op for our hats. And the initial photo, and then we had to realign so that it was color coordinated and aesthetically correct. Well, we've got a dead one on the trail. No fuel. I'll get it, Dion. I'm already dirty. Just, I'll get it. I got it. I'm ready here. Blow through the back line. Just make sure we got bubbles. Now we're checking fuel pump. You got that? I got the little screw. Rebuild on the trail. One Jeep with fuel issues, but we're back on the road. Next stop was a place called Pride Rock. You can see why it's called that, but it's just a great place to pose a Jeep up there. Got a couple of really cool pictures. And, uh... Then we're off to our next adventure, which is a flat tire. And since he didn't have a jack, we held it in place with a tow rope, and everyone just lifted the Jeep up and changed the tire. That's going to do it for this video. I'm not officially finished with this truck yet. It is officially on the road, though, and that's half the fun in it right there. Uh, I did put air conditioning in this truck. And there's a lot of information if you're going to do a retrofit AC system. So uh, there's enough there that I think it would be a valuable standalone video. So we'll do that in the future. I'm also going to uh, do a little HP tuner work on this. And I'm not an expert at HP tuners by any means, but I'm learning slowly but surely. And there might be some information someone else can use in that. But thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.